Good evening and welcome once again to Race Around the World. On the way from Lebanon to Israel, John Safran had a stopover in Athens Airport where he was pulled in by security and grilled for hours. Apparently being a blonde Melbourne Jewish black Protestant with a camera passing through from Lebanon was clear grounds for suspicion. Then the security guards discovered this cute little business card that John got made up before he left that reads, John Safran, terrorist and heroin trafficker. <laughs> That broke the ice. <laughs> Amazingly, they were so amused, they escorted him to the plane and gave him a free drink voucher. Thus refreshed, John arrived in the holy city of Jerusalem. <laughs> Growing up Jewish in Melbourne, there was one Jewish miracle I was told about on more occasions than any other. For geographical reasons, the overall dismal St Kilda Football Club is huge amongst Melbourne's Jewish community. And when they won their one and only grand final back in 1966, many Jews claim it was because in that year, the grand final fell on the same day as Yom Kippur, the holiest day in the Jewish calendar. The theory being, there were so many Jews in synagogue praying that day, how could we not win? This was always presented to me as some sort of irrefutable theological proof that God was Jewish. Well, I'm going to put it to the test. Round 22, St Kilda versus Port Adelaide. Can I use Jewish prayer to determine the outcome? These are tefillin boxes which religious Jewish men wrap around their arm and head for morning prayers. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad, Yesh Saints. I'm outside the Western Wall, which is the holiest place of worship for the Jewish people. And as you can see, they stick um, little messages in the cracks, which is meant to be some sort of direct line to God. Anyway, here's my round 22 footy tips. I'm going to be putting them in the cracks, and I hope God's going to be listening. When you're a little kid, there's nothing worse than when you accidentally kick the ball over the fence and then the bastard who owns the place won't let you go over and get it. Well, can I just say, some things just never change. I was here playing kick to kick at the Israeli border. I've accidentally kicked the ball over the fence into Lebanon, and now those grouchy little Israelis won't let me go over and get it. I was just playing kick to kick near the border, and oh, I kicked it and it went over. Someone will shoot you. <laughs> I've always thought that the ultimate test of a fan's support for their team is the streak. I have no fucking idea why I'm doing this. <laughs> This is, this is, this is quite scary. This is possibly silly. Okay, just give me, just give me, just give me a moment. Give me a moment. Okay, I'm gonna do it. Just give, give me a minute. Give me a minute, okay? Oh, God. Why am I doing this? This is really silly. And it's, it's quite lowbrow also. It's not like, you know, it's not clever. Fuck it. <laughs> and that was uh, John Saffron with his mixed grill flapping in the cool Jerusalem breeze. <laughs> Tone. Oh.
So the rumours are true, he's, John is very well pixelated, isn't he? Yeah, <laughs> it was a more than one pixel job to cover yeah, him up absolutely. too. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm a bit surprised actually that he hid his Jewishness, really, because I mean, what was he worried that he was going to offend us? I mean, he's been doing that across the world for the past <laughs> X number of weeks. We tried to encourage him, he wanted the pixelation, he insisted on it. Oh, look, I thought it was beautiful, I thought it was a really fantastic film, I thought it was offensive again, as he always is, which is great, but also very, very funny. I love the bit at the wall, I mean, you know, kicking the footy over is fantastic. And the streak is just a brilliant idea. I was exhilarated by the entire streak. I think Channel 9 should hand out yeah. cameras to all streakers rather than having Bill Laurie, you know, talking about pigeons while they don't show them. If you've got the decency to get your gear off, you've got to get on telly. 19. 19. Yeah. Yeah. Makes the guys from the footy show look like pussies, doesn't it? John. I think the guy's a legend. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolute legend. I mean, he's charismatic, he's funny. He's um, nude. He's nude. <laughs> Um, it's, it's, you know, the truth is, there's not a thing about that film I would change. <laughs> Except the pixelation. Yeah. I had decided to give it 20 points, but the pixelation for me is minus one point. I'll give oh, it that's a fair cop, I'd have to say. Sarah. <laughs> Get a hold of yourself, will you? Look, he loses a point for me as well because of the pixelation. So he gets 19 from me. I was wondering if he squinted whether it would go away. <laughs> too much to do oh, it. Dear. Um, God, it's got me interested in football yeah. and religion. I loved it. It was just wonderful. And, you know, as David Caesar says, you love John or you hate him and I love him. OK. We're going to get a nasty call from the Benai Brith, I know, but that's 57 <laughs> points for John Saffron coming in from Jerusalem. <laughs> this audience is a dentist, so we can't show you their face. At the end of the series, the overall studio audience winner gets a producer slot on the ABC's ultra-hip youth program, Recovery. And tonight's winner in the studio audience vote is John Saffron, who's in the overall lead so far as well. And in the judges' scores, we have John Saffron on 57 points, Claudia Rowe on 51, Bentley Dean on 47, and Kim Trail on 46 points. And we've had to take points off again for lateness. Two for Claudia and four for Bentley because it's his third time. And now the overall scores in the race so far. Olivia Rousset has stolen the lead again from Kim Trail out in front on 383 points, followed now by Kim and John Saffron. The competition is neck and neck for the first prize. The winner gets the courses at the Australian Film, Television and Radio School and the opportunity to produce a postcard story for the big guys on Foreign Correspondent. Not to mention this exquisite signed portrait <laughs> of the race's icon, the mustachioed master of documentaries, Mr George Negus. And that about wraps it up for us here on Nude Moments 3. Please thank our judges, Sarah McDonald, John Paulson and Tony Squires.